Hello world, this is Random Fix, and I just made a crazy detailed video on a VS30 Sprinter. This is the 2019 and newer, and it took me 28 days of hard work to complete this. So if you guys ever wanted to know anything about a Sprinter and wanted to get those questions answered before you invest, check out this video. I'm going to go ahead and answer all those questions for you. And in later videos, I'll show you how I did this in 28 days and did it on a very tight budget. We're going to be doing a real-world review of a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. This is the VS30, the 907, whatever you want to call it. And if you want to know the vehicle model that you have, check this out right here. It tells you right here when you open up the door jam. This is a 907. And I picked this up about 50 days ago. It was brand new. And I put on over a 1,000 miles, so I'm going to go and review all the features of the vehicle and all the cool little things that I found out about it from driving and I'm going to share those with you this is a 3.0 diesel model I know there is a four cylinder model available too so I'm going to cover that with you guys a little bit later in the video as well and this is going to be the 170 high roof and so this starts in a 140 a 170 and there's a 170 extended which is even a little bit longer which is pretty cool uh, and it might be a little bit challenging to park because this already sticks out about two feet out of a standard parking spot even when you pull up your tires right up to the actual uh, concrete barriers of most parking spots this will clear it but you just cannot get in any further pretty resourceful about my parking but definitely Watch out for the length if that's a concern to you. As far as uh, width, this fits in a regular parking spot. That's why I wanted a camper van, not an RV this time. So last time I had this Sprinter and a 3500 diesel and it did not even drive close to how this thing drives. So very first thing is gonna be, you have some pretty cool uh, mirrors here, which I'm gonna cover with you guys. They actually fold in and they're adjustable and so you're going to get a better view uh, of everything by using this little um, curved mirror here and these right here on the bottom part are not power this is power and they do fold in so i'll show you guys that on video and i got the slider here and make sure when you're getting the slider that you actually get the one that has uh basically uh a little stop right in the middle right there see how the door stopped so you want to get that and if you don't and you can actually find a cool little um, part on Amazon it's like 50 bucks you basically almost uh, glue it in place and it works just as well I'm gonna cover with you guys in this video how I actually got this for and in this video today, I'm going to share with you guys what I actually paid for it. So there it is if you guys want a quick glimpse of it. I was also able to score a pretty good deal on the financing. So 0%. And basically um, for 60 months. So that is super, super cool. So there is going to be the amount right there. My payment's a little hefty, but it's at 0%. So nonetheless... Um, there's really not an advantage in me paying it off right away. It did have the rear AC back here, which uh, I'll cover a little bit later with you guys. And this one happened to have some extra. So we got a TV. We got an inverter underneath the seat here. Sine wave 2000 watt inverter, which did not come with the remote. So I'm going to go ahead and install my own remote, which is about 40 bucks. So right now I have to remove the door every single time. And uh, I've ordered some accessories already. So I got some WeatherTech floor mats in here. I also got the WeatherTech window deflectors. WeatherTech is pretty good as far as making sure that the fit is good. So this fit like a glove. The instructions were very poor. So I have a video on how to do that because you're gonna break it if you follow the instructions. So I found a little trick around that. It has a small amplifier there. It is a 12-seater, so it had the two driver and passenger seats up front, three-passenger, three-passenger, and a four-passenger row. 
which I took out of the vehicle and they're actually in the garage right here and they're super heavy. So I'm going to do something with those. Um, and it's got household 110, 120 volt electricity, three plugs throughout the van. So three here and then it's got two up top. So which is pretty cool if I needed those. And this did have a partition in the back. So it separated the front area from the cargo area. So you could fit 12 forward. And then in the rear area, it had a bunch of storage for something. So I'll show you guys what that area looks like. And go ahead and show you guys in the back over here. I've been traveling around with this for a little bit because I really wanted to test out some stuff here. And one of the things I wanted to test out was this cassette toilet here um, because I've had RVs before and I wanted to give this idea a chance and so far I'm gonna give it a thumbs up super easy this is my makeshift test trial that I've been doing for the last couple of weeks um, I did start by removing the AC system because the company that actually installed this partition so I moved that out and I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect all this once I'm done with my build so I got everything put away and obviously I got nice panels in here the windows actually are uh, covered up here so I might take those off and we're gonna go and get in the driver's seat now and I'm gonna cover with you guys some of the exact things that I love about the vehicle and some things that really concern me So very first thing here is the key. This has a new key. This is super cool. It obviously it was brand new so it came with two of them. And if you go ahead and hold on to your key button, you can see that the windows are rolling down, which is pretty cool. You know, I know it's just a regular almost cargo van, but it's kind of a cool little feature. My regular cars don't even have that here. So um, kind of a nice upgrade. And you can do the same as far as rolling them up. You just hit it once and you hold on to the button. And there you go. And those WeatherTech wind deflectors don't cause any issues. When we get inside here, this model does not have the power seats. So I got a manual seat here. It does adjust. And these seats do not swivel. So I went ahead and ordered the swivels. And I believe I got the driver one in already. Um, here in the garage so I'm going to install those on a different video I'll show you guys how to do that safely there's some people that are showing people how to do this and then it caused the airbag light to go off and everybody has to go run back to the dealer to go ahead and get that reset so I'm going to show you guys how to avoid that and you got your fuses down here as far as the vehicle um, you do have a nice uh, front console here and the steering wheel is easy to adjust, so you could go ahead and telescope it, lower it, raise it up and down, which is pretty cool. And then inside the vehicle, if we climb in, we can see roughly 1,600 miles on this. So I bought this with under 200 miles, so key is going to be right here. And the key is very tricky because if you go ahead and remove the key all the way to the back over there and it's back there, it's not going to detect it. So when I first bought this vehicle, the vehicle wouldn't start. So there's actually a secret spot right over here where the key has to sit in and like that. And then you want to go ahead and start it. So you don't have to do that all the time. But if it tells you to go ahead and place the key in the spot, that's something that you want to watch out for. And uh, hopefully it never happens to you. But I already did replace the batteries in this remote. I had the Mercedes-Benz dealer do it just because that shouldn't be happening already. So the vehicle started now. Um, and this is the diesel 3.0 turbo. So if you have a gasoline, it might sound a little different. But I love the diesels. And I'm going to cover that with you guys a little bit more on why you should really consider the diesel model 
and not the four cylinder gasoline model. So um, let's start off with the driver's side here. We can see we can actually fold up the mirrors and the way we do that is go ahead and hit that little button in the middle. And both sides basically tuck in. So I have never used that feature just because this van is actually narrow enough to be able to park in any spot, which is pretty cool. Then we have the windows, which are one touch. So one touch up, one touch down. Really great feature to have on a van like this. You have the lights here. So this does not have the LED lighting, but I actually got the LED lighting on my bench. So I'm gonna show you guys how to install that and you don't have to pay thousands of dollars for it and I'm going to be able to show you guys how to do that on your low and high beam and this one does have the fog lamps so those are really nice and they provide better visibility at night time and now let's start with the driver information system here and the steering wheel because everything here works together so these buttons actually can act can scroll just like that so if you guys see me moving my finger you can see everything changing in the driver information center right there. And this is amazing because I've had other S-Class vehicles and this has the same exact features just like that. So when I get directions from my navigation system, it'll actually let me know what lane I need to be in when I'm making a turn. That gets a thumbs up from me because my last printer didn't have that. And this one does, and this system here is amazing. All you have to do is say, hi, Mercedes. So now she'll go ahead and look up directions. Anything that I need, it will go ahead and, and get done. Uh, it has a hotspot, so if you do want to go ahead and use at and system, you can. And it costs about $200 a year, which is not bad. And they say it's unlimited. So I'm not sure about how that works. And Mercedes, cancel. So that went ahead and canceled it. So pretty cool system there. We do have paddle shifters on the vehicle here. So I got a negative here and I got a positive here. So this has a seven speed transmission. It is push engine start, which is great. And then if we get a little bit closer in this area over here, we know we got the rear backup camera and the rear backup camera has three different views. So I basically got a 180 view here. I got the backup camera and it's got more of a teardrop. So whenever I'm coming home and I'm trying to back in here, I always use the camera and does a great job of gauging the distance for me. Now let me show you guys what the backup camera does when you want to throw it in reverse. So to do that, put your foot on the brake. And you're gonna see that it is reverse right there. And basically, you can see a line right there. And it moves with uh, my steering wheel angle sensor. And so this one right here is really gonna be helpful or if I guess you're towing or something. So that is a great feature and then my only pet peeve with this backup camera is sometimes when I'm on the freeway, I'm not able to engage it. So I like to be able to keep this view on all the time if possible, but it won't allow me to do it. So it times out after about five, 10 minutes, which is okay. It's doable. And some other models actually have three storage compartments. Mine only has the center one. And when it comes down to it, guys, it's pretty good to have all these connection ports up here it's supposed to have almost a wireless charger mine doesn't have it so if i have my phone in here i can close this but sometimes i want to use the fast charger that's built into there and it will not let me close this so i have to drive around with this bin open so i wish they routed a wire or a little cutout somewhere along here where i can keep that cable out of the way so I can close it so that's not happening because this because this port right here does not have fast charging that one up there does 
So we got the navigation system here too. Amazing navigation system. And I guess it comes with three years of updates. So if that's a concern to you, Mercedes includes that for three years. Stereo system in this car is awful. So I'll have a video on how to replace the speakers and uh, do it the easy way because uh, some people are making it more complicated than it needs to be. And FM radio, Bluetooth, it has all that stuff. And on top of that, if you hit where it says car, you can go to vehicle. You could do all the adjustments here, light systems. So if you go ahead and hit the home button right here, it's pretty cool because you can scroll through settings, apps, information, media, radio, navigation, and your phones. Here on the info, I got an instant display here. It's amazing when you're driving this. And this is why you want to get the diesel model because if I take you guys for a drive and show you guys how the diesel engine differs from the gasoline engine, I think you guys would be a lot more inclined to looking at the diesel model versus trying to save a few bucks by going with the undersized gasoline model. Consumption here, and we can change the time frames. We've got our owner's manuals we can look up here. And so a lot of great little things that we can go and utilize right on the spot. I'm averaging about 18 miles per gallon on this particular vehicle. And so... I actually think that's great because my last sprinter on the RV chassis, guys, I was really getting anywhere from about 8 to 14, but I had to really try to get 14. On this one, I'm not trying to get 18. It just does it itself. And I like the fact that this is not the dually, so I can service the brakes myself. And we'll talk about the service a little bit later on the vehicle. So great dash here. You got some more compartments for the passenger side. I have some stuff in there so I got some projects going on you got lots of cup holders so we have a total of four cup holders down here we have one two more up here and two more up there so we got eight cup holders which is amazing and before we leave this area one thing I did want to talk about is gonna be the limitation of the system so I'm gonna ask the system to go ahead and turn down the heat and you're going to see what happens. Mercedes, How can I help you? turn down the heat. I'm sorry, but this function is not available in this vehicle. So that is a, kind of a bummer. I want to show you guys the app on the Mercedes Me application because it's amazing. You can access everything. When I bought the vehicle, it would let me know that my vehicle battery was below a certain voltage tells you everything that you need to know and it was included and it's the best app I've ever seen for okay so this is my application here uh, as you guys can see I use harvest host there's two apps for the Mercedes me application and we got the overlander app so if you guys want to go and basically do stealth camping overlander is amazing uh, and I, it's the best I've seen so uh, I've so far I have not paid one dollar for uh, stealth camping in my sprinter so let me launch the application here so here's the application and uh, basically I can get in touch with Mercedes financial dealers and find the owner's manual and this MF 2 PV 76 is the model number for uh, Mercedes and now I'm gonna go ahead and go to my connect app here and now I'm on the application here and it's pretty cool because it lets me know the mileage on the vehicle updated last minute ago and gives me the range warnings I can go ahead and lock the vehicle if I forgot to lock it or unlock it so if I get locked out of my vehicle, I can unlock it with my phone. I'm able to go ahead and get the status of anything in the vehicle. I could also look at some service items. So I could look at some service items like the DEF fluid or the AdBlue. I got brake fluid, coolant, 
and starter batteries charged washer fluid is okay and it lets me know when my next service is due which is a year from now then we got tire pressure so check that out I can check my tire pressure from my phone instead of having to go and check every single tire and having to figure all this out this is a, really a blessing We got trip data here, so it gives me information about the vehicle and lets me know what's happening, average speeds, average miles per gallon from reset. So on here it says that I'm averaging about 16.9. Please keep into account when I first got this, I went camping a couple of days and I literally left this thing idling. And I know uh, on a diesel you can let it idle for long durations. I don't think it's the best thing for it because it could cause issues with your EGR down the line. You really wanna to try to go ahead and use a diesel heater if you have one. And we got the valet protection feature. So basically I can go and draw a little circle on where a valet driver can basically drive and it will notify me if they drive out of that range. And I got the car here itself at the very bottom. And then I got a little navigation part. So um, it lets you know where the vehicle is at all times. If you feel like sharing something with another partner of yours, you can share your location. And another thing you can do on this right here is, for example, if I wanted to go to the grocery outlet here, I can go ahead and send this to the vehicle by hitting this send to vehicle. And now when I get in the vehicle, the address is already programmed into the navigation so um, for me personally that has not worked out well I don't know if, uh, because I don't have an iPhone but if they can get that feature to improve that would be great so that is the Mercedes-Benz ME application which gets two thumbs up from me any vehicle um, I have newer vehicles are 2019s and uh, they oftentimes suck this one does not suck at all. So I'll show you guys that app. As far as the seat, we got a nice seat here in the leather. I like the headrest better from the actual passenger's chairs because they allow you to, to go ahead and tilt it like that. So I took those off the passenger's chairs. And then I realized the driver chair didn't have that nice little holder for your coat so I took the coat uh, hook here from the regular chair too and that's worked out really well and again this is gonna have the the seat swivel which is gonna really change up the dynamics when I go for a longer stay somewhere a great little feature to have the visors up here are pretty cool um, they are oversized so you definitely can block out the sun if you're trying to do that up here we have sos which is built in and it actually works uh, the sos works i've used it before and you can reach customer service or mercedes-benz customer care just by letting mercedes know here so mercedes cancel so that could get a little annoying if every time you say the the make of the vehicle it's going to go ahead and kick in but i'm sure you're going to find some work around that and then the seat belts right there are adjustable and the rest of the vehicle obviously we're going to go ahead and do a complete overhaul and we're going to turn this into a camper van but now we're going to talk about some cool features of actually driving the vehicle the first thing is the drive this thing drives amazing but there's a little secret when you're driving this vehicle what you can do is you can go ahead and go to pull up to a stoplight and stop like you normally would so I have my foot on the brake and pay attention to the dash here so I'm gonna go ahead and push it twice if you go ahead and pump the brake twice you'll see it says hold and basically when you're driving throughout the city you don't have to keep your foot on the brake the whole entire time this is such a cool little feature that uh, I wish more vehicles had it but on this Mercedes they include it which is amazing and I really enjoy that. And the cruise control on this thing is amazing too. So to turn in cruise control, all you're gonna go ahead and do is hit on. 
and once you're driving you can go ahead and basically uh, set it and then you just scroll up and down you do need to be over 25 miles an hour on most vehicles to engage cruise control you're able to access everything for your driver information system right here so if I hit home here it goes and makes adjustments over there that's pretty cool and I'm able to go ahead and move everything using that button so very nice and one of the pet peeves I have about this vehicle is it's happened to me twice I'm actually driving the vehicle and I think that I have parked the vehicle so I'll go to hit park and the vehicle starts moving on me so after the first time so after it happened to me the very first time now I go ahead and set the parking brake before I go and hit the little button here to park it keep that in mind here and then as far as the climate control system here guys uh, on this one we have a diesel heater uh, and that's a really nice thing to have but it does not work unless it's under 29 degrees so I'm working on a workaround for that so I'm working on some way of altering that temperature so I can go ahead and get the diesel heater to actually turn on because they want you to turn it on every month and a couple of ways of actually heating up the rear cargo area here the passenger area so you can go ahead and use the sink function on auto have the heat turn all the way up and go ahead and choose your selection and this is the first time I actually have gotten this to work which is kind of amazing so I have hot air here normally these vents right here always blow cold air and for once I actually have hot air here and the diesel heater is not running so it's using the engine heat to go ahead and radiate heat out here through the coolant so that is pretty nifty and both of those are hot so definitely pretty cool fun feature so check the video link I'll probably have that done by the time you're watching this video you're able to go ahead and either sync the rear air with the front air or you could do them independently which is great So lots of heat, lots of uh, cold air when you need it. And the storage bin underneath the driver's side, if you don't have the inverter, is just basically a nice huge compartment. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you what's underneath the hood and show you guys where the battery and certain things are located. As I was about to show you guys what's underneath the hood and some of the things that I found out about the van, we had some deliveries come in so uh, I think this might be something for the roof so one thing that I realized about this printer compared to the other sprinter the other older sprinters used to have a quick disconnect for the battery this one doesn't the battery is going to be located right underneath the driver's foot uh, area right there so you're going to need some Torx screwdrivers remove that and the battery is there this battery on my vehicle already got replaced because from sitting on the lot because of COVID, it was bad. So this battery and the other auxiliary battery I'm about to show you are brand new. So with the hood open, we can see we got the other battery here because of that inverter underneath the seat. This has an auxiliary battery. And again, this is a diesel motor, so if you ever need to jump it this is going to be your positive port up here and you got your negative right down here above that battery so easy to jump start if you ever need to that is the reason why I sold the last printer is because they had put some sort of aftermarket components and it had a draw so after three days it wouldn't start so I got really annoyed with it and they didn't want to fix it so here, so nonetheless here we are at uh, better and bigger things we got this one that we're working on now so 3 liter diesel you got your air box up here 
this car is super easy to work on guys you shouldn't really have to tinker around with this i used to work on cars so so a very easy vehicle to service you got your oil filter right here so you can change the oil filter you don't even need a creeper to change the oil so basically dump all the oil out you can do your oil oil changes the service intervals on these vehicles like fifteen thousand miles which is a very very long time and the air filter for the engine super easy i haven't tried the cabin air filter for the newer sprinters but the old ones were super easy so this might take a little bit more time if you guys wanted to put another battery in the vehicle i actually found a mount that goes right here direct bolt in nothing required as far as drilling and it's like 90 dollars. so i wish i found out about it earlier but what i did for my vehicles i ordered three sets of 280 amp hour lipo batteries so i'm going to have this battery the other battery and those lipos and my whole goal is to have so much power that i really don't have to rely on the solar if i decide to put the solar in because again i'm not going to live in here and i'm going to have enough battery um, to go ahead and last at least three four five days without having to worry about the alternator or anything else so if you have a bigger power bank you can do that and i like agm batteries it's just that when you discharge these agm batteries that come on these vehicles under 50 percent they really don't recover the same exact way so i definitely want to go with the uh, lipo batteries and the uh, lipo batteries i think it's life po4 or the batteries i think it's lithium um, phosphate batteries those batteries just do a better job and they are not hazardous in the same exact ways so i'll have links down below on where you can find that anything that i talk about in the video guys you'll find a link down below if you guys look down there so the battery tray any goodies that i've found from my discoveries on how to get a cheap tire carrier anything it will be down there so diesel motor versus the gasoline motor you definitely want to go with the diesel and the real reason is not about the horsepower guys when you're messing with something that's a little bit larger like this don't look at the horsepower look at the torque so a gasoline engine really has to uh, go ahead and rev up in order to make torque on a diesel motor it makes torque in the low end so it's just a lot easier to drive you're not having to get on the throttle the same exact way and I think in resale value, the diesel motor is what I would buy. And so you guys could do your own research. And since we're talking about maintenance, again, this is not a dually on the 2500. So I can go ahead and service everything on this vehicle myself. So I intend on doing my rear differential fluid on time here, doing my own brakes. Obviously, the tires I'm not going to do myself. And these are going to be very expensive tires when you do need to replace them so keep that in mind you do not go for cheap tires on your sprinter just because of the height of this vehicle if you have a blowout on the freeway i don't want to talk about it but it would be a bad situation and invest in some good tires everything else on the vehicle pretty low maintenance i would stay ahead of my transmission services on this vehicle because this has that new 7-speed transmission versus that uh, older 5-speed, which was really tried and true and a great transmission. They had it on vehicles that had over 600 horsepower. So stay ahead of your transmission services on this vehicle. And now I'm going to go and point out some things that I discovered from being around the vehicle. And is if you're building a camper van set up in your Sprinter and you run out of space, there's a lot of room right here in the front of the vehicle a lot so i mean you could fit five gallon ten gallon jugs down there no problem on both sides you do have that extra tray of for the battery if you wanted to get that so you could have one battery two battery three batteries if you want to do short power and you don't want to go ahead and drill into your van what i would consider doing is possibly building it in here or making a soft plug somewhere up here on the wheel well area that would work out well if you have the auxiliary battery that power is actually the power that's distributed through the center console here so if you have a little inverter or something that maybe 
your vehicle ha doesn't have a supplied inverter like the one I have here, you can go ahead and use that and that will not mess with your starter battery because there is a little delay in here. So after the engine starts, the two batteries don't connect for a little bit of time. I think it's about 30 or 40 seconds. I haven't timed it out, but if you're ever in a situation you don't know where to get the power from, that port right there is basically coming from the auxiliary battery, which is great to know. If you guys are doing a van build, they actually make a very affordable tire carrier, which is about a hundred and maybe 20, 30 bucks for the driver rear door over here. That way you can go ahead and remove the spare tire from underneath. And when that spare tire is out, what you can do then is go ahead and put a 22 gallon tank down there, which is about $290. And the other option is you can go ahead and put a storage compartment in here. So if you like to go surfing, you have your wetsuit, whatever it is, you can definitely do that and throw it down there and not have to worry about getting everything uh, dirty here as far as the flooring. So that's a little bit more of an expensive option, but it definitely can work. You have a couple of different options for van builds as far as ladders. You can get one on the side, on the driver's side, or you can go on the rear doors here. And I'm finding those to be about six, seven hundred bucks. And if you guys are really intimidated by the pricing of those baskets up top, there's some companies out there and they're really affordable. You can get them for um, about a thousand dollars. So I'll leave those links down below as well. And I've talked to them and they're real. Uh, they, they deliver or you could pick them up in person. So great little baskets that they make and you can save yourself a lot of money. So you can save yourself three, four thousand dollars just by shopping around a little bit. I know there's some companies out there that actually sell a screen uh, for about one or two hundred dollars. I found another company that actually makes a tent for back here. So this whole back of the van here turns into a tent. So I'll leave that down below for you guys as well. Look into a cassette toilet, guys. So far, I love it. It's super easy. I didn't ever think I was going to like the simple setup, but it works. And there's no smell. And if it ever breaks, I just get a new one for a couple hundred bucks. And I'm not having to mess around with uh, black water tanks, all this stuff. Easy peasy. Uh, and cleanup is even easier with a cassette toilet. So I, I love that option. And I know there's a lot of companies that offer wraps, those kind of things. I actually found a complete leather bra for this car for a hundred dollars which is super cool so it looks cool it protects more than a regular wrap and you can just slip it on and you're done especially on a vehicle that's black i think it looks cool even if yours is white it'll still look cool it gives it a great contrast if you guys have any ideas on what i can do to protect the roof area i would love for you guys to leave those in the comments below i have gotten a couple of quotes to go ahead and paint the top part of the, the van in basically line x and they wanted about twenty two hundred dollars for that uh for the whole van i got a quote for five thousand and some other company gave me one for some other product like rhino liner or bulletproof and they wanted ten thousand which was crazy i'm going to show you guys so here we have the parking situation so with the vehicle parked we got about two and a half feet that's actually sticking out depending on the spot this is just a regular parking spot so definitely fits in as far as the width and for the front what I always do is get my wheels right against the concrete parking stall stoppers right there and sticks out that much but really really easy to drive and it just got dark, so I'm going to show you guys some of the features that you wouldn't appreciate about the vehicle until you actually got it at home in your driveway. And these are pretty cool, so you definitely want to stay tuned. And I think you're going to be quite impressed on what the Sprinter actually offers at nighttime. And this is the factory headlights, no LEDs with the fog lamps. And I want to show you guys one cool little feature. 
when you actually turn in a certain direction. So when you turn, you'll actually see like the additional corner light here and I'll try to show you guys from the side of the car. So here is the car. So the headlights, so the fog lights actually have to be off for this to be shown. So when I turn left, you'll see that the left side illuminates. When I turn right, you'll see that the right side illuminates. When you're on a dark road guys, this makes such a huge difference for that. I give this another random fix thumbs up for that. One thing that's kind of cool is on the backup, if you actually hit this button right here, the lower one, you can see that we get that yellow light down there coming up on the dash. And look at the rear area. That actually gives you a little bit more light when you're backing up in a dark area. So I might actually connect that to a better uh, LED bar or something so I can use that switch triggering that and it is pretty cool and the fog lamps make a huge difference as well so let me show you guys that right now so these are the fog lamps and again you can use the fog light switch here with the relay if you want to put some LED light bars or something easy way of doing that just make sure you get a relay in there and not too complicated yeah. there's something that Mercedes-Benz doesn't tell you about the Sprinter before you buy it and it makes kids really happy Z do you like having a Sprinter? Uh -huh. how much do you like it? one thumb up or two thumbs up? Two thumbs up. well you gotta give everybody a two thumbs up man <laughs> We're ready to go. As soon as it turns green, I just hit the gas and I'm good to go. And look how beautiful this dash is at nighttime, guys. Even though it's somewhat of a commercial-ish car, it's got a beautiful layout now. Beautiful dash. The paddle shifters are easy. You don't have to go and move a big clunky shifter around. And I will show you guys the blind spot monitor right here so if I go ahead and try to signal right you guys can see that little mirror blinking right there that is letting me know uh, you guys can see a little red light in the mirror that's letting me know there's somebody to the right of me and this thing is absolutely amazing now uh, you definitely want to get that feature if possible and again the paddle shifter is super easy and anytime you want to get out of it just shift all the way up and you're back to regular drive I do use the paddle shifter when I am driving near the coastal areas or really hilly areas I love to have that kind of control and in the six cylinder turbo diesel is amazing and this is why you want it no hesitation and I'll show you guys a little bit more about the difference in the motor driving styles a little bit later when we actually pull up the chart here all right so I'm near a hill area and we got this nice beautiful readout here that lets me know what's happening with the horsepower and the torque pay attention to that torque right there and you're gonna see what happens even on a hill we are gonna go up a hill here I'm not really having to get on the throttle and this is smooth there's no jerkiness. I don't have this huge need to push the accelerator and rev up the RPMs to three or 4,000. RPMs are low, it's nice and quiet, and it's driving beautifully. So we have a somewhat of a, a big vehicle novice with us on here. How is it driving the Sprinter compared to the big RV that we used to have, the, the Mercedes one? Well, this is a lot easier to drive, um, smoother, no bumpy, not, it's not bumpy, um, with ease, yeah, it's like a driving a regular car. Nice.
It doesn't feel as clunky, is it? Is it? Yeah. yeah. So this is the drive, guys, of the Sprinter. No highlights, real world. I think you'll be very surprised once you get it home. The more I drive it, the more cool little things that I figure out. And the kids love it. That guy right there. Those guys are loving it. So during COVID times, this is uh, becomes our restaurant on wheels. So we actually are taking this to the restaurant, getting our food and eating it in the Sprinter here, just because there's no indoor dining. So whoever's watching this video in a hundred years is gonna have no idea what we went through during COVID. Uh, and how it affected people that like to eat indoors. <laughs> what, what would you call those people? Um, um, indoor eaters. Foodies. Foodies, indoor eaters. Oh, yep. So we're gonna do a real world acceleration test here on the turbo diesel model, guys. Don't get talked into the four cylinder. Trust me, you're gonna be overworking that four cylinder and it's not gonna last you as long. It's going to be worse than my windows here, which need to get cleaned. <laughs> so we're behind a regular vehicle. See if you can keep up with that guy. Acceleration. Check that out. Her RPM is going to be uh, about 2200. We got lots of torque, low horsepower. So here we are on the freeway. And today we're going to Five Guys Burger because the older one got his teeth pulled out today. Z, you want to try Five Guys today? Yes. Nice. Well, I'm going to get a cheeseburger because the cheeseburger is expensive, but I wanted to try a cheeseburger. You want to try it? Yeah, I want to. going there and when you're driving the Sprinter compared to the Sprinter RV even in the cities here where you happen to live in California you don't feel nervous so I actually take this thing to work every other day and uh, it's kind of fun so I'm thinking about selling my smaller car because the gas mileage on this is pretty good so definitely easy to navigate and by the way, I'm not getting paid by Mercedes-Benz to say this. Uh, unless you are, are you getting paid by Mercedes-Benz? No, I'm not. Shut up, you! Please repeat. Cancel. And one of the things that you do when you have a Sprinter or a larger vehicle learn how to park away from people so that is actually a great spot next to that Tahoe whatever that is right here yep and she can still get it in turn all the way wow I think you got it perfect yep you're good so there's the back of the van. We definitely got a lot of room. We don't have to really go forward, but you guys can see in most parking spots like this, it fits and it's easy. So the funny thing is we actually ended up at the Habit instead of Five Guys, which I like better, but the kids uh, want to try the Five Guys. So we're back in the car. Going to five guys. We're going to five guys. We're not giving up. So in case you're concerned that you need to get running boards because there, nobody could get in the vehicle. Cyrus, how old are you? Five. So you're going to see him get into the vehicle. Show everybody that you can do it. Do we need running boards? No. No. The real reason you don't want to get running boards is when you go off-road. You're gonna go ahead and nick him into something. You're gonna be very pissed. And this very door seals are very strong. Mercedes. How can I help you? Five Guys Burgers in Pleasant Hill, California. 
Please select it in. Please repeat. So right now you can go ahead and just. What would you like to do next? The route is being calculated. You guys are going to see the navigation in use. So I have the voice turned down since I take a lot of phone calls on the Bluetooth. So here's one of my pet peeves when you start driving and you hit this camera button, it will not show you the backup camera, which is kind of annoying. It's kind of nice to see it, especially if you're towing something. You would hit this button and it would show you the backup camera. One thing that's pretty cool is it tells you the navigation directions in the center console here. So it's letting me know to be in the left lanes. And this is what will happen is if you go into a compact parking lot next to a Prius, it still works. Huh? I like the bus. Oh, thanks, man. We're, we're converting it. We're converting it into a camper. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah, so the yeah. kids, we're having a lot of fun with it, man. Good. Yeah. Good. So. Have a good night. Nice to see you. Sure. Said he likes the bus. Huh? Said he likes the bus. Uh -huh. Yeah, can we get one of the grilled cheese with, loaded with all the veggies? So all the way? Everything? Mayo, lettuce, pickles, mayo? Yep. Making okay. this out. Anything else? That is going to be it. And one other hint that you have a diesel heater in your vehicle is if you actually see this blinking light and you can kind of see it through through here too because this is uh, somewhat translucent um, you know you have a diesel heater Hey guys, I hope you found that video to be helpful. If it was, please give the video a thumbs up. If you guys want to check out the whole van build, I'm going to leave the video links down below. I got a lot of footage and I'm going to show you guys how to do this the very simple way. Don't make it too complicated. And the most important thing is that you can get it done and you can enjoy your new toy with your family. And I've actually done a couple of trips in this a few times already. And this thing is amazing. It's insulated. It's got all the goodies that you want. I got solar, I got a deck up top, the flooring is done, I got a shower, I got a bathroom, oven, cooktop, everything is here. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this in a later video. Again, thank you for checking out the video. Give the video a thumbs up. Leave your comments and your questions below. Thanks again.